Hey guys, welcome back to Dreaming in Color. Today, we're going to be applying the things we learned from the last shading video to real-life objects, such as fruit. I'll be using an apple as an example. Like last time, I'm going to start off with drawing the basic shape. I'm just going to draw a circle very lightly. Make sure you don't press too hard so that it's easy to erase mistakes or just go over lines. Next, I'm going to outline the structure of my apple, starting from the left side and going up. Um, and then also curving down. It's a little bit straighter near the bottom, so I'm drawing a straighter line, while at the top of the apple it's more curved. I just keep going around the perimeter of the apple, and keep drawing out the curves. You may have noticed that I use multiple strokes for one part. Um, this is because I can make multiple lines, so I can later choose which line to use. Um, so I have a lot of options and can change the shape as needed. You can see that there's a little dip at the top of the apple, which is why I went in like that. And now I'm just going to uh, draw the portion where the stem connects. Okay, now I'm going to switch my pencil and move on to the shadows. I like to start with the shadows so I can get the shape. Um, more easily, and then do the highlights. As you can see here, the light is coming from the top left, and it leaves a highlight on the apple, which is really bright and white, so that's something to keep in mind. There, I probably will not be coloring in that area. Next, I'm gonna just draw a very, um, like, approximate the outline of the shadow, and then just go in um, on the darkest part first. You may have noticed that I'm going up and down. This is because I want to go with the curvature of the apple, which helps uh, give the illusion of its texture. Now I'm moving to a lighter pencil, 2B, so I can draw out the lighter areas of the apple. Of course, it's not the super light areas, it's kind of like medium values. So I'm just going around the edge of the shadow that I just drew, just colored in, shaded, and uh, trying to blend it in with the lighter areas. Again, I'm following the curvature of the apple, which is pretty important, so then you get the illusion of the shape. Here you can see there's a darker area at the bottom left of the apple, so I'm just going to draw the shadow here and then color it in with the, the medium value pencil as well. At the top where the stem comes out of the apple, you can see that there's an area where the side of the apple is actually blocking the light. So there's a shadow in the, uh, basically where the stem comes out. So I'm drawing out the shadow again, and then I'm going to switch back to my darker pencil, 4B, um, so I can get a nice value for that shadow. It's pretty dark, so I'm just filling it in pretty heavily. So now since I basically got most of the shadows and medium values down, I can start doing the lighter areas. I'm going to use an even lighter pencil, I think HB right now, and um, this is what you would normally use in a classroom or, you know, in your day-to-day -day life. And I'm going to keep following the curvature of the apple and just draw in the lighter areas. At the bottom of the reference apple, you can kind of see that it's a little bit lighter. This is because of reflected light. 
This basically happens when the light from the light source bounces off the surface that the apple is sitting on, um, for instance, the paper for the reference, and then reflects back onto the apple as reflected light. This usually only happens on uh, lighter surfaces, such as the white paper that the apple's on right now. So I just pay attention to that, make it a little lighter than the rest of the apple, and there we go, we have reflected light. After that, I just continue with the rest of the shading in the lighter areas, making sure not to press too hard. Even if you're using a lighter pencil, say in the H ranges, um, if you press too hard, you can still get pretty dark values. Here you can see that I'm paying attention to the highlighted area that I did before and um, making sure not to color it in because it's the lightest area. Next I'm going to outline my shadow, the main part of the shadow, and then the larger shadow. This is called the cast shadow as we covered before and it's usually darker than the shadow that is on the apple or the form shadow. So now I'm going to use a 4B again which is the darkest pencil that I am using for this drawing. And I'm going to outline the border between the shadow and the apple so I can make it clean. After that, I'm just going to color around the outline first, then I can kind of get the borders really nice and straight, and just fill in the shadow after I've done that. After I'm done with this part, I will move on to the larger shadow and then just outline it again. Um, I'm not going to put too much work into this one, just going to kind of follow the direction of the shadow with my pencil and um, fill it in. And there's your apple! Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you want to see more content, then you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Instagram, or just check our website. Thank you! See you next time!